Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Today Imanyana. I'm Alex. This is Xavier. We're really excited to have you joining us this morning. It's a, it's a chilly morning in beautiful Charlottesville, morning. but it's a beautiful Just morning get you to sit energized. down. Get cozy and listen to some day manana. We have some awesome entrepreneurs. We do. And some awesome uh, businesswomen that we have with us on the show today. We're going to be joined at 10.30 by Carolina Obando of Carolina Obando Beauty. Um, and then at 10.50 by Stephanie Devada, owner of Seville Pitnet. And by Linda Dull, the event manager at Glenthorne Farm. It's a beautiful spot here Looking in Charlotte. Looking forward to all that. So just a fantastic show lined up If we're going to get by the today. first 15 minutes, it'd be great. Yeah. I know. Just have to, all you got to do is la- last through the financial segment. Um, <laughs> Learn a little the educational part. We're like Absolutely. one of those. Um, we're like one of those shows. You know those little children shows where they're teaching you something, but then you really want to just get to the fun part. That's us. We're teaching you a little <laughs> something, even though you have you have to get through and say, "Oh, I really want to see Carolina and uh, Stephanie <laughs> and Linda." That's right. <laughs> but uh, that's what we have this morning. Our our charity for this week um, is the SPCA. Okay. Of Charlottesville and Albemarle. That's because uh, Vitae Spirits, one of our sponsors, is having an event. Oh. Uh, on Halloween, it's he's partnering Sunday. with uh, Jad Browns on Sunday. Um, they're having an event uh, in support of the SPCA. So I have uh, dogs you can come look at to perhaps oh. adopt, um, and then you can donate to the ASPCA while you're while you're there uh, enjoying a drink from Vitae Spirits. We gotta make sure a, Michael uh, doesn't go to the. <laughs> that keep him, that, yeah, I know. He'll come Michael back away. with like two dogs <laughs> that he's uh, that he's adopted That's right. from the event. Um, <laughs> other sponsor news, as always, we are presented by Emergent Financial Services. Um, we're also powered by Cristel Noel State Farm, by Seville Picnic, by GBS Financial Services, by Vitae Spirits. Um, some news on Cristel Noel: she was actually featured on uh, the National State Farm. Wow! Featured her because um, it was Amazing. the week of uh, mentors. Um, they call it femtor, femt, femtor, but it's like your mentor as a female entrepreneur. Okay. And so, of course, her mentor was Olga Morse, the founder of Ford Adelante. Oh. So, Cristel got featured and talked about just her quote, I believe, was that um, the disadvantages that you think might limit you can actually set you apart and be an advantage That's if right. you use them to create something unique. That's right. So, that was her. So, because of that, she was featured nationally uh, by State Farm. So, Fantastic. congratulations to Cristel Noel State Farm, one of our sponsors here. At today, mañana. Muy bien, so, muy bien. Muy bien, muy bien. Muy merecida. Sin duda. And so, all right, so we got a topic today for financial sentiment. Obviously, Jerry and I on the show on I Love Seville on Tuesday, we were talking a little bit about just things that were happening, um, predictions, inflation, hyperinflation, how are things going, um, that little Twitter spat between um, <laughs> Kathy Dorsey Wood of Art Investments Wood. and Jack Dorsey, the uh, CEO of Twitter. But one of the topics that came up, of course, are what are we seeing um, in the market in terms of not just the markets, but the economy as a whole. What are some leading indicators you and I are looking at? What are the signs? As Jerry was talking, obviously, he, he and Keith talked a lot about uh, real estate. So he and Keith were, I guess, seeing some, some signs that were not as good in real estate as they've been so far. And we were just talking a little bit about what we're seeing and what that kind of portends for the economy and our crystal ball for for 2022, as difficult as the crystal ball uh, is. Well, and, and you know, this is all very interesting because, you know, part of what's happening in the economy, right, is a combination of very expensive energy prices, right, which, mm-hmm. which is always a problem. Um, and the other thing that's interesting is the fact that when you talk about real estate, it's the rise in interest rates, right? And so mm-hmm. we've seen the 10-year go up by about 50 or 60 basis points, and you know, mortgage rates are linked off the 10-year treasury, right? So, so, of course, as interest rates rise, the cost of your house then becomes a little higher because in the sense that you're going to pay a higher interest rate. So, so all that gets tied together. You know, this is, and I always say, you know, you, you, you look back in history and say, okay, where are we and, and how can we go back and say, okay, here's, here's, at the, here's the stage we are in this particular situation because that's how it was back in 2008, mm-hmm. 2006, or before that, 1998, whatever. The issue is that every single uh, recession is really different. In other words, exactly. the, the catalyst to that recession is different, right? And we are really, you know, faced with a situation here that is somewhat confusing, right? And it's never happened before. And, and if you take a look at you know, I mean, I, I grew up with the bond market, right? And the yield curve is a great predictor of things that may happen, right? 
And if you look at the yield curve over the last month and a half, it's been chaotic, right? And so mm-hmm. last week we even talked about how, you, you know, you began to see that long-term rates were separating themselves from short-term rates and mm-hmm. also from stocks. And this past week has been a complete reversal. The, the spread between, I mean, the five-year treasury and the 30-year treasury, right, that whole area has begun to flatten. And even though it doesn't seem very much, the three-month T-bill, for example, has gone up from like 0.02 to 0.06 for no reason. In other words, that, that won't move unless you think or unless the Fed is going to act, right? Mm-hmm. And so you sit there, you go, all of a sudden, short-term rates seem to be going up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And long-term in rates, in yeah, in a very short week. week, and long-term rates have come down, right? And so you say, well, is it because people think that that's the end and therefore they want to take advantage of the long-term rates, or is it something else? And I just think that people are very nervous, right, about what is happening, and the inflation numbers are very scary, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we know that the Fed has said, it, you know, we think it's transitory, and then they say, well, you know, we have to define transitory, and then they don't define transitory, and we're sitting here six people months. People nervous. Yeah, six months in, and, you know, there's a difference between seeing 3 or 4% inflation versus, you know, 5 6% inflation, right? And we talk about 5 and 6% inflation from the perspective of CPI and PPI, which is the numbers that look into what the inflation rates, but... You know, you look at gasoline, it's up, you know, 40, 50%. You look at food, it's up, you know, 12 to 15%. I mean, so the areas where where the consumer truly needs to spend their money, you know, they're seeing a 20%, 30%, 40% increase, which means that there's a lot more money that's going in now into buying services or goods that you need to live on as opposed to goods and services that you want to enjoy. Mm-hmm. So all that I think is very nerve-wracking for the consumer, and you see consumer confidence go down. And you and I have talked about this before. Consumer is seventy percent of the economy. Of so the economy. if they begin to feel the pinch and say, "I can no longer right buy goods that I don't need," in other words, the 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 area of the economy that you say, "Yes, I gotta buy food, I gotta buy oil for my house, or gas, mm-hmm. or gasoline because I gotta get to work," right? But it's consuming, right? The the funds that I have that are that used to be disposable to buy fun things, if if that stops, the economy begins yeah, to have a challenge, right? Which I mean, we saw a little bit as headline numbers today were. So we got the third quarter GDP, GDP number, number out, and it was 2% in the third quarter. And even economists were expecting 2.7. Right. So it was even, and that in itself is a low number. Remember, we're coming off uh, a year where we plunged the economy, you know, almost 90%. You would expect that. And it looked like it was going to bounce back in a V-shape, but now we're kind of stalling. And we're stalling to an even greater degree than economists have predicted. So they were looking at 2.7. We ended up at 2 um, you said, I think you commented on Jerry so yesterday that the tracking for fourth quarter is 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, so yeah. it's under one. Yes. Personal consumption expenditures, so that's how much people are buying. That's personal consumption expenditures. You'll see it as PCE sometimes. That's the number where that's a measure of how much people are spending as consumers. That was 1.6% in the third quarter, down from 12 wow. in the second quarter. Yeah. So it really slowed down. No, and you're, and, and you're seeing that across the board, and and you know you can blame you know you can blame inflation on many things, right? But I I always say that when you when you look at the transportation cost, meaning gasoline in particular, mm-hmm. oil in particular, right? When you look at that cost and it goes up by 40, 50, 60 percent, right? Something's going something's got to give, right? Mm-hmm. When you have a lack of truckers, right? You have to ask your question, is it because there really are a lack of truckers or is it because the trucking service says, I can no longer make money because gasoline prices mm-hmm. are so high, right? And I can't even charge more because the person that I want to charge more to says, no, I, I can't afford that. Well, but so, the person you're charging already has to pay more for the goods exactly, that you're transporting. Exactly. I mean, I mean, shipping from the, the, I think it was shipping from China to here, right? I think the, that cost has gone up 1,300%. I mean, that's just enormous. That's insane, insane right? And, and again, you know, we, we, we talked it about this. It why we, we, we're constantly sort of tooting that horn of why certain things you want to be made here. Because you don't exactly. want to put yourself exactly. in a position My point. where that's suddenly things you need. 
those microchips, those things to make cars, those things for medicinal purposes or health care purposes. You don't want to put yourself in a position where suddenly those things cost you 1,000% more That's right. to get. Well, you, you put yourself in a position, right? I mean, let's, let's look at oil in, in general, right? We were self, I mean, we were, we, we were energy um, independent, right? And we decided to, the administration in this case, decided to, produce, to less sh- oil. produce less oil, right? And we are now buying oil from not only, you know, the Middle East, but from Russia. And you say to yourself, how does that change the perception of how much oil we really use other than the fact that we are now paying more, right? Mm-hmm. And we are putting ourselves in a situation, and we've done this for many years, where we are now at the call, beck and call of... Mm-hmm countries that necessarily don't have the same mm-hmm. viewpoints that we do. In other words, China is a communist and Russia is communist. And, and that's fine. I mean, you, you can have whatever government you want, but it's not the type of government that re- want really to we want to be well, dealing with. they're all in the, they are Russia plus the uh, OPEC countries, the ones in the Middle East. Once you give them leverage, they are going to use that leverage. They're going to cut back and say, all right, we're going to make less oil so that you have to pay more for our oil. So you need at least one trading partner that's not in lead with them. And exactly. Thomas, we were that. I mean, we ourselves were that person. That's so right. If we're going to do that, then we have to be prepared right. for the fact and so that for, they will And so we've react. done this in just about every part of our economy, manufacturing, any type of production you can think mm-hmm. of. I mean, we talked about the, the, the medicines that are all created abroad. You get to the point where you've given, you've, you've sent everything away, mm-hmm. right? And now all of a sudden... All those countries say, all right, we're in charge because Mm -hmm. they're buying from us. So now we can say, if you want it, you have to pay more, right? Because why has shipping costs increased by that much? There's no reason, right? I mean, if gas, wanted, oil hasn't gone up by forty by uh, 1,300 because it's, if you wanted, you it's going to cost more. you more, right? So we've put that, ourselves in that position. So from the perspective of the U.S. economy, right, and not only the U.S. economy, but other countries around the globe, right, but certainly the U.S. economy, which we imported so much, right, that, those imports are not just increased dramatically, mm-hmm. causing an enormous amount of inflation and shortages, which is even worse, right? So I think from a perspective of this country, we have to take a step back and say, do we want to bring back manufacturing here? If we're willing to pay 20, 30, 40% more for product, mm-hmm. you well, mean to tell me, to yeah, we, yeah, then at that point, we should be able to afford to do it here, right? And there are certain parts of the economy, without any doubt, you should have the manufacturing here anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Because like I said, it's, a, it's just a function of different type of governments. I mean, we, you know, as, as we've talked about it, we are not comfortable buying any stocks, right, that are from China right now because of what they've done. Because there's no transparency. No transparency whatsoever. And, and as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. You don't want transparency. I don't have any issues with it. I just but I, I just, I'm just not going to buy your stocks because that's not how the way we work. I can't go to a client and say, I don't know anything about the financials of this company other than what the government gave me, and you know, I don't know where they got that from. And so I feel good. No, it's just, just not exactly. how, this is not how you invest, right? So I think this is what I mean. So the... What's happening right now is something that's never happened before. So how can you predict the future? Mm-hmm. You know, without any doubt, if you think of technology, technology has a way to bring in inflation down. So technological innovations, mm-hmm. right, helped during from you know 2008 onward, and it should help going forward. But the squeeze that we're getting from everything else is very, very painful. Mm-hmm. So when is that going to stop? Is it going to stop? Are we going to do anything in the, in the meantime? I guess to help? the question for 2022 is: Does it stop before people have to cut back so much that you've sent the economy into recession? Essentially, in other words, there's a point at which the average person says things are so expensive, I need to stop buying. Right. Right. And when you reach that point, and everybody does that collectively, we all stop buying. That's when you actually hit recession. So the question is. Like, we know the things which can cause recession. The question is, does this persist long enough for that to happen? Or does it prove to be transitory, as in less than one year, and it pulls back? Because like I said with, on, when I was on Jerry's show on Tuesday, it's one thing to tell someone, hey, you're going to have inflation for three months, and it's going to go away. But when three months becomes four, becomes five, becomes six, 
then people start to change. We start to change our behavior exactly. naturally. Exactly. And that's what you don't want to see happen. And that's what we're in. The, we're sort of in that gray area. You know, there's people always asking us for the crystal ball look, right? And I always think back to uh, whenever people send me the look in the crystal ball, I think back to the Lord of the Rings where Gandalf says, you <laughs> don't right. know who else may be watching that's right. the crystal ball. <laughs> and so you, you sit there, we're in that gray area where it's not a clear sight because there's so much uncertainty and there's so many external factors that you look at and say, well, until these things go away, right, we don't know what's going to happen because we don't know what that limit is at which the consumer right. says, I'm done. I can't afford anything else. Exactly. I'm and, and, and that's what and that's you don't want to happen. that's different for each person, but it's hard to figure out what that is for the entire autonomy. Yeah, yeah. And, and you would have never expected that coming out of a pandemic because, you know, people coming out of a pandemic we wanted, the wanted, exactly, wanted to go out and have a good time, right? They wanted to experience life all over again, you know, not just buy goods, but also buy services, you know, go on vacation, hotels would have done better, restaurants would have mm -hmm. done better. You know, and, and we're just not seeing that. I mean, part also is, you know, the, the, the new COVID guidelines have, have caused some of that issue also. Mm -hmm. But but you really going into 2022, you're a little nervous about it. And so certainly without any doubt, you want to have a situation where, where you look at your portfolio and say, am I really well diversified so that whatever happens, I'm I know that position. part of my portfolio will do well, part mm -hmm. of it may not do well, but what we always say the idea is you need to have that constant growth and if you can get that constant growth where it'll be you know between six and eight percent you know that's fine i mean some sectors will do like i said the s&p 500 is up 23 percent this year so it's, so it's not like we're suffering but if it's if next year the s&p 500 is only up to a three percent then that's fine for two years you've still done very well so you still have positioned yourself in such a way that you're not finding yourself in a sector that's down 30 percent next year and exactly. you say uh oh you know I, I shouldn't have put all my eggs in that basket right mm -hmm. so that's the key but you know it, it is a um you know may you live in interesting times um it's interesting times, it's interesting but times for different reasons, sure. but they're interesting. Exactly. Yeah. But there's, there's still hope in the sense of that, you know, as long as we can try to get small business thriving again, that's that will go a long yeah. way yeah. To, to alleviating some of our issues. Yeah, and, and let's hope so, because without any doubt, the, the small business, like the consumer is 70% of the economy, the small business, in my opinion, is the backbone of this, of this mm -hmm. country. Right, it's what makes this country great. Is that you? You walk around, and there is. I mean, this show has proven to us how, how many, many small, small businesses, businesses there, there are, are, which we said I didn't even know. Right, and it's it's fantastic, and and we just have to keep our fingers crossed that that continues to uh, to flourish. Exactly. Well, that's why we we'll keep highlighting them. As, Absolutely, as we do on the show. And so, in that vein of highlighting small businesses, we have we, one here we have, with we us. We have one here with us today. We're really excited to welcome to the set, to the show Carolina Obando of Carolina Obando Beauty. Uh, Carolina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate the opportunity that you uh, all have given me to be here. Uh, for me, it's very important, and now that I've listened to you guys talk about the economy of this country and the, how important small businesses are, and I totally agree with you. I, I think that uh, uh, I appreciate the small businesses, the local businesses, mm -hmm. and uh, everything, everything. Uh, they all do for our community, for the economy. Absolutely, including mm -hmm. yourself. So for those, for those who don't know about you, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself and how you came to, to have Carolina Obando Beauty as a, as a business. So this is a, a little, this is a long story, but I'm gonna try to make it, to make a long story short. Uh, uh, always, I always enjoy doing uh, uh, the beauty businesses, uh, the beauty business since I was in, I'm originally from Colombia, South America. Mm -hmm. And since I was a little girl, I always enjoy uh, uh, doing my friends' hair, my family's mm -hmm. hair, makeup, hair, beauty pageants at school. And this is something that I really enjoy uh, very much. And this is actually was my hobby growing up. Uh, when I moved from Colombia to the United States, I moved uh, with the idea of going to college, four-year college, uh, to study business and then going back to, uh, go back to Colombia. Uh, it didn't happen that way. Things changed and, uh, and we have a, a, I have a, a few circumstances, uh, difficulties that uh, didn't, uh, it kind of got in the way mm -hmm. for me to continue college, right? So I went back and I said, well, um, I really want to do something that I enjoy a lot. I want to go back to school 
and do something that I really enjoy a lot, that I enjoy doing, and that I can help others and with my talent. Mm -hmm. So I thought, and I remember that, you know, growing up, I always loved the beauty. I always loved making every, like, everybody look look more beautiful because mm -hmm. I believe that everybody is beautiful. Uh, everybody, we all have, like, a, a very uh, uh, particular beauty mm -hmm. of us. Everybody is... A, a beautiful creation. So, but uh, my um, my passion was always do something like uh, be able to increase and make everybody look more beautiful, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Enhance the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. So I went back to cause I went back to school, and that's when I decided to go to cosmetology school. Okay. Uh, I was very very young. I've been doing this for about 20 years, but uh, always working for a salon or working as a self-employed. Mm -hmm. Never wanted to open my own business because I was a little scared, a little afraid about it. So, uh, but a lot of people start knowing me in the area as Carolina Obando, beauty, right? And uh, when it was time for me to open my own business, when I felt like, okay, it's time for me to do this, uh, I told that keeping Carolina Obando, keeping my name, will be the best because oh, everybody knew me. Exactly. Everybody Absolutely. will find me as my mm -hmm. name. So I thought about finding a, a business name, but will everybody will uh, advise me, you should keep your name. Uh, your name sounds nice, and everybody knows your, for your mm -hmm. name. So that's how I, can, I came up with that name. And that's an, and, 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 you know, Carolina is a, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it sounds beautiful in the first place, right? So mm -hmm. it goes well with the beauty and it's easy to roll out of easy the to tongue. Remember. So, and, and then once everybody <laughs> knows you, it's a Carolina Bando beauty. So exactly. therefore the they brand. know who it is. Like exactly. When, um, Fernando Rene from House of Touch was on. He said that you are in, mm -hmm. in certain businesses, he does barber. Okay. And he said, you are the brand. That's right. Yes. Like, do you, your personality, what you do, your talent is the brand of mm -hmm. Carolina Bando beauty. So if I had to ask you like, what makes... What you what makes you unique, like Carolina Bando Beauty, the business unique. What are some of the things you you do for your for your clients? How would you how would you answer that? Wow. So um, it depends on the client, right? Depends. On the client. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. Um, well, I think what makes me unique, um, I do personalize my services. I do believe that. Uh, Everybody needs a different, different, uh, different service. Different. Um, uh, everybody's different, right? Um, I believe that every, like all women, especially because I specialize on color and color correction and uh, makeup, uh, all of that. And I believe that not women nowadays are not only looking for like looking, like changing their appearance, but they mm -hmm. also want to be listened. Uh, they're also like uh, want to go to a beauty salon not only to get their hair done, but that's kind of like a way to pamper themselves, especially mm -hmm. nowadays, to be listened, to talk to someone, to actually say mm -hmm. things or talk about things that they're not even, even, even able to talk to their own husbands or to their <laughs> own family. And for me, I behind the chair, I emphasize on that, that I'm uh, that I want to listen, that I want to be able to provide them with a good advice, with a center, you know, uh, uh, advice. Yeah. I want to be like their friend, somebody that they can count on. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, for me, not only for me, it's not only uh, important to be able to beautify them, like, but also to make them feel important. From the time they start, they co they walk in the salon, mm. they sit down on the chair. They want, they 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 are queens, you know. Women are special. We're queens, right? <laughs> so sometimes we're not listening, not even on their on our own home. So I I want to create like I I, I create a space at the salon where women go uh, to the salon and they feel important, they feel nice, they feel special, and they walk out of the salon not only looking beautiful but also feeling. also feeling relief. Mm -hmm. And also, I do work with natural, organic, derived products, uh, mm -hmm. or certified organic mm -hmm. products okay. uh, from head to toe. So you're he you come out healthy as well. It's not like you've been, you've been exactly. putting out things that are good for you. Bunch of chemicals on to make that, are, that will also, I guess, are good for your skin as well. Exactly. Health, wellness. Health and wellness. From inside and out, so I feel like I'm a kind of like a therapist, <laughs> therapist a beauty therapist. 
<laughs> yes, yes. A, so a therapist uh, of the mind, the heart, and the body, right? Yes, for me it's very important because we can look very beautiful outside, but out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but maybe not very pretty or very. Uh, uh, how do you Confident say that? Or no, um, I, there is a word in Spanish. Como car, uh, I, I have to say it in Spanish. Say it in Spanish. Go, for it. Go for it. Uh, cargados en el corazón. Uh, como un know, poco energized. No. No, no. So when, you're, when your heart is heavy. Heavy. heavy exactly. A heavy heart sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you want to sort of lift their lift spirit. That, exactly. lift, that, lift that heaviness ah, out. Exactly. That's right. So we do a lot of, we have these rituals at the salon with essential oils, you know, like uh, our client uh, will come in the salon and they will get a scalp massage, uh, mm. head massage, uh, you know, uh, it will, it's a good time to, re to relax and mm. experience the natural beauty and the holistic products as well. Oh, oh so you also, mm -hmm. so in the salon you also give massages? Yes, okay. massage. Okay, well, that's interesting. With, the, with essential oils? Yes. And like what type of, like lavender oils? Lavender, uh, eucalypto. Eucaly oh, eucalyptus. Uh, yes, like I, uh, I feel for me that's very important. Nowadays we are running everywhere, no, running no, everywhere, true. working moms. Uh, her small kids at home, having like be like having to take care of the household, uh, the stress that we live in right now. So to to walk in on a, a beauty salon and just got this time not to just walk in and get your hair cut and leave again. Right, mm -hmm. right. Just have that experience. For exactly. me, that's more important. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. And how many uh, are you work by yourself, or do you have other people working with you? So I do have two assistants that okay. work with me right now, but I'm looking. I mean, it's, a, it's been a working process um, because we just expanded the okay. salon. So I was uh, I came from a, a small studio, her studio, mm -hmm. to a bigger salon. So right now I'm working on building a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what's the growth been like on the entrepreneurs? Side? What's it been like to like? be the owner, because in addition to what you do mm -hmm. on the beauty side, you obviously now, you're the owner of a business. What's that growth been like and you know, behind the scenes and what you have to put in? Well, let me tell you, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. It's just, I'm just very surprised that even through the difficult times that we're going through with the pandemic mm -hmm. and everything, it's, I've never seen this coming, never saw this coming, never thought that I was gonna have such an amazing growth. In fact, it's been a little, it got a little overwhelming to a point where the, the growth kept happening, mm -hmm. kept happening, and, and I didn't have enough hands, you know? So that's more. pretty much <laughs> what is really, uh, for me, the main concern is mm -hmm. that the community is embracing me so much. The people love what I do. They love, they love uh, the experience. They love their hair, their makeup, their services, and... Um, I'm very happy and glad and blessed that we have this tremendous, tremendous growth. But uh, finding, I think my challenge right now is finding the right people, the right team, mm -hmm. getting the right team together uh, with the right attitude, not only experience and talent, but for me, the attitude, attitude is very important. Absolutely. Because I have, I have um, worked so hard for so many years to come to where I am right now, and I want to continue to be able. For me, my clients are the most important of like for me clients are very important and my clients are important and I love them I, I try to take care uh, of them take a good care of them so if the team that comes with me needs to have that same vision Mentality. the same love mm, the course. same attitude mm -hmm. absolutely which is which is the challenge I mean when you have that mm -hmm. Uh, business built in like yours in so many ways on trust. I mean, it's built on a relationship between you mm -hmm. and the clients. Yes, absolutely. You want to make sure that like yeah, the yeah, team you have to, is you a have challenge to, to make sure that as a small business owner, you bring mm -hmm. in people that share that vision so that they continue to build that trust exactly. with your clients and exactly. continue to grow the brand and the reputation that you are. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's very, very important. And not in this way, like having, I believe that having the right attitude. Uh, also is um, a, a very good, like a main, uh, how do you say this, a fact? Can I say that as a fact mm -hmm. or as mm -hmm. a, un, una característica, un factor, sí. yeah, mm -hmm. to, grow, to be able to grow. Yes. Right? And uh, as a business owner, I want everybody with me to grow, mm -hmm. right? To be able to be, to, to 
to be honest with our clients, to be have like a very to be sincere to them, mm -hmm. open to them, uh, loving, and at the same time uh, driving like uh, uh, have that passion to grow. Mm -hmm. And I believe having being honest, having honesty, and loving what you do, having the passion, and adopting the same vision, and working as a team on a business that's that's the key to success. And, and, and really, that's the beauty of, of small businesses, right? Is mm -hmm. that if you find the right people to work with you, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes. Then the business grows, you mm -hmm. know, organically. Because if those people have the same vision and passion that you do, they realize as you grow, they grow also, right? And, and you work for huge corporations, and you may have a lot of ambition and and mm -hmm. and passion, but. You know, no matter what you do, you're still just an employee. But yes. here, you're part yeah. of the growing business, mm -hmm. and that's and part like I said, just the way you spoke passion. about Catalina as, yeah. as a team, right. right? And as assistants, it's not like there's this corporate entity that says, "All right, here, your job is just to do this person's hair, and once you're done, you're mm. done." It's like no, for you, it's the whole atmosphere, and the team is part of that. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yes, I I, I agree. Uh, is this is more than a job for me, and uh, and I'm sure that there is uh, a stylist and cosmetologist out there that think the same way I think mm -hmm. and, and love their career the, the way I love their career or maybe even more. But unfortunately, there are also professionals that are not, you know, that don't see this beautiful career as, as, uh, a passion, like part right. of their life, but they say just such, like like just as a job. A and job. That's it. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to work, do what I do, and and so that when that happens, when that's part, when that attitude is part part of a person, of a uh, of someone, of a being, mm -hmm. um, is very. It makes it hard for the for people to succeed on mm -hmm. what they do, right? Because I, for me, passion, having passion of what you do, makes you makes you makes you do the job perfect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And exceed the people expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you can see it because just the, fact, it. just the fact mm -hmm. that you use or organic product mm -hmm. tells you that you care. It's not mm -hmm. just, you know, I can use whatever mm -hmm. just to make them feel good. It's like you care yes. about their body and saying, I'm not just going to throw this chemical on you to make you look good. I want to put something on there that I know is good for you, oh, yes, right? Yes. And it's not mm -hmm. going to harm you. Mm -hmm. That all, you can just see that, that there's a passion to mm -hmm. serve in such a way that is a loving passion, right? And not just, mm -hmm. you know, I have a passion, but I'm just going to, I'm also thinking about the bottom line. No, that you can see that mm -hmm. there's, there's a, a, a passion and, mm -hmm. you know, a genuine love for what you do. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's and it's the totally extra right. effort that only really the entrepreneur can put in. But sure. you being the owner can say, mm -hmm. this is the vision that I have yes. for my business. Absolutely. There's no one above you saying, Carolina, this is the vision of the business. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. But you get to decide mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And this is what makes it so beautiful because before, when I used to work with, for, when I was an, employ, uh, an employee, I saw uh, things that maybe I didn't agree with and, and always have that vision. Eventually, when I own my own business, I'm gonna, I want to provide people with the best, the best not, not only services, but the best uh, products as mm. well. And I do believe that it's important uh, because, uh, and, and this is I, going back a little bit about, uh, to talk about how I came up with this holistic mm -hmm. uh, concept. I around I was surrounded of uh, friends and some family that for uh, using conventional products out there got uh, like what they I, they started experiencing like health problems mm. like hair loss like skin uh, decoloration mm. allergies uh, right. cancer like all of these problems health problems that women don't know that they actually we get it from the products that we're putting in our skin the shampoo you're using mm -hmm. the hair color you're using yeah. and you probably don't see that immediately but you'll see it with the years mm -hmm. like what is my hair why am I losing my hair yeah, why so is my yeah. hair eat my scalp <clears throat> issue why I have this problem on my scalp why is like infertility, all of that, uh, because our skin, like everything, just mm -hmm. absorbs yes. it in. Exactly. exactly, and it goes to the to the blood, and it's, it's just crazy. Just I mean, when I found that, when I started, I started researching more about it and learning all of this horrible stuff that conventional hair color and products and for skin and and hair care do to your health. I definitely have to change. No, I agree. I have to make I had to make a decision because 
it was my responsibility. I knew it now. So it was my responsibility to be able to offer something different to my clients. Absolutely. It's true. And, and it happens because mm -hmm. sometimes if you, you know, you walk into a salon and, and you can smell, right, these, the, um, you know, whatever, whatever they're using mm -hmm. for hair color and you can smell it. You go, if it, and, and you say, if it does, if it smells powerful, oh, it can't be very good. Magic. As opposed to walking in and no, smelling yeah. like a Roma or something like that. Or eucalyptus or lavender or something. Yeah. It's the natural Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Carolina, you have some fans watching the show today. We've got uh, Astor A. Obando. Yes. <laughs> Love the show. Viviana my... Alonso Ponce. Yes. Hola, hola, Oscar. <laughs> so Oscar is watching me. He's my husband, and I'm, oh. and I'm surprised he's watching me now. He has a little, he reacted. He reacted. <laughs> he has he's, a little heart. He's keeping an eye he on you. That's the, what it is. Yeah, he's keeping an eye on me. Yeah. <laughs> he, loved, he reacted with a heart to the, uh, to yes. the post. <laughs> Uh, thank you both for watching. Thank you so much. No, this is this has been wonderful. Before I let you know, so where, if people want to get in touch with you or yes. contact you, where can people find you? Where can people reach you? Yes, absolutely. So we are located in the heart of Crozet, uh, Crozet, Virginia. Uh, it's right next or across to the to the library on the Piedmont oh, Place oh, building. Okay. I'm okay. having a hard like I have a hard time. From, like my accent is still very strong. I've been in the United States for like no, over you're doing 20 great. years. You're doing great. And my accent is I, I never was able to reduce my accent. But anyway, so it's in located. So the salon is located in the second floor inside the the Piedmont Place building okay. in Crozet. And we are open from uh, Tuesday to Saturday um, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also, plenty of time. You can even come after work if you need to. Exactly. In the evening. Exactly. And because we're kind of like, we go by appointment. So usually we go out of the, sometimes this has happened uh, where we go after working hours or before mm -hmm. working hours just to kind of like, uh, to fulfill someone's sure. uh, needs. Like need, if yeah. someone needs to, oh, I'm going out of the country, or like uh, there is no way I can see you before eight. So we have gone before working hours or after uh, working hours to be able to see clients. So That's if fabulous. they can contact us or call us, uh, call us, um, we so probably, I think we're probably going to share that in the. Absolutely. Yeah, no, we'll share the contact info in the yes. link. But uh, do you have a. So but you can be found on Facebook. Yes. As Carolina Obando Beauty, can people make an appointment via yes. the message? They can make an appointment uh, uh, via like a uh, Facebook message or Instagram. Yeah. And also uh, my phone, Vagaro. I'm also listed in Vagaro for appointments. That's my oh, okay. uh, schedule uh, uh, platform okay. where okay. people can Vagaro. go in and make appointments as well. Awesome, Wonderful. awesome. Oh, more, you have a lot of big fans. So the, the Ana Maria Gallero Uribe says, excelente persona, excelente mamá. Sonia Dora y gran empresaria. La gracias, gracias, Yanita. Te quiero mucho. Y en Yesenia Martínez es hermana Caro. Dios le bendiga. Gracias. Y Ampa Amparo Gallego is giving you like... Oh, yeah. My family is on board. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is awesome. Which is awesome to see. So fantastic. Thank Carolina, this gracias. has been such a pleasure to have you on the show with us today. Un gran, Un gran placer. placer. Muchas gracias. Gran Muchas placer. gracias por venir. Gracias a ustedes. De verdad que les agradezco que hayan contado con, conmigo eh, para tenerme en el show. Para mí es un privilegio poder estar acá. Igualmente. Uh, mm -hmm. Igualmente. Igualmente. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll do while we do our little swap a -roo here. Uh, That's right. Guest, we're gonna do just a, <laughs> another fantastic interview with just, it's just, I love, you love to see and sense the passion. Yeah. Like yeah. when you have entrepreneurs like Carolina on, you sense how much they love what they do. No, right? exactly. And it comes through, I know it comes through when he were in person, it comes through the camera and all of that. So it's so fantastic. Right. And, and you know what's, what's the, the beauty of it too is that when you see um, people that love what they do, and, but then they also, it's that, like I said, the, the caring part of it, right? Where, you know, it's not just, you know, I, I cut their hair or I give them a massage or, you know, I make their mm -hmm. face look beautiful, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever beauty goes into that, right? But like I said, using those products where you know that they're, they're good for you, right? Or at least they don't harm you. And that's so important because exactly. without any doubt, long term, that's, that's so important, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And so from one passionate 
yes. uh, entrepreneur. We, we, we bring on another passionate entrepreneur, two passionate individuals. Two, exactly. About, uh, passionate about what they yeah, do. Yeah, full house here. So a full house, a full house, and, and some beautiful creations that we're about to, to show you. So we're really excited to welcome to the set uh, Stephanie Devada, the owner of Seaville Picnic, and Linda Dull, the event manager at Glenthorne Farms. Stephanie, Linda, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. We're, we're, you know, we're Stephanie. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you back. You know, Stephanie said that I should ask her all the questions in Spanish because she's now, you know, so Honorary so well, <laughs> yeah, versed in Spanish. Un so. poquito. Un poquito. <laughs> Un poquito. But to, just, I mean, first off, I mean, to, we did a nice look at, look at this that. fantastic charcuterie board, fall themed. I mean, it just gloriously beautiful. Thank God we got Nick That's, here. I know, right? we got yeah. some, some got camera work going on here to work. get this uh, on the screen for you to see. I mean, it's, it's gorgeously done. And so, I mean, Stephanie, is this a, a taste of what, so someone who is doing a faulting picnic with Sivo Picnic could, could experience? If, if they request some specialty, usually we do you know, seasonal flavors mm -hmm. and items and everything. This one's a little bit out of the norm, a little extreme, yeah. but, <laughs> oh, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. For the show I, I just today. want to know why is it over there, not over here? I mean, uh, we got a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> you want a, a piece of it no, over no, no. there? <laughs> but it's just, I mean, those show you the, the, but they can spend this level of detail and artistic talent when you are there and you, you experience the pitnets that you provide. Oh, I mean, we've had some special requests, too. Sometimes I've had, like, five proposals in the oh, past, oh, like, wow. five weeks. So we try wow. to, you know, <laughs> add some romantic touches, Absolutely. some salami roses. You know, who doesn't need that? Oh, that must be fantastic. <laughs> well, you get to look at it beautifully, and then you get to taste it afterwards. Exactly. You get to, you get to eat it. So I just want to give you both a chance, because I know sometimes we've got some new guests that maybe aren't familiar with you. Tell us a little bit about both Seville Pitnet and, and Glenthorn Farms. Sure. So um, I've been in business for about a little over a year now, and it just keeps on growing. This fall has been super busy. Wonderful. And um, I partner with a bunch of wineries and now a farm as well, too, mm -hmm. and set up luxury picnics. We bring pretty much everything to you um, and coordinate with the wineries and the farms and so you can just need to show up and enjoy your picnic. <laughs> oh, amazing. Tell us a little bit about Glenthorne, Linda. Glenthorne Farm is our family farm. It was um, originally started in 1767. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. It's been in the, it's in the Rockfish Valley, right off of Route 151. Oh, okay. um, right, on, right there. Very yeah. easy to get to. Right Absolutely. there on the Brew Ridge Trail. Uh, we're closer to the end, um, kind of the location. We're right behind Bold Rock. Okay. Um, and well, our family has been on the farm since 1880. Wow. And it has been a family farm. And wow. just this past May was when we started to open it up to do events. That's and fantastic. And we found Stephanie and talked with her. And we together came up with the idea of partnering. And it, it's been wonderful because we've got some beautiful mountain views. We're right in the, mm -hmm. in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And we have got a ridge that looks over the Rockfish Valley, over oh. the... South Fork of the Rockfish River actually goes through the property. Oh, we've nice, got, um, nice. A stream, we've got a waterfall, we've got all kinds of things. So it's just a really great for pictures. Oh, yeah. We've got photographers that come to do engagement photos and family photos. And yeah, it's That's just a, a spectacular scenic place to be. And so. That's incredible. So tell us, I know we've got some exciting yep, news. A great that place we're... to come for a picnic. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> A picnic, and then exciting news, um, they renovated the carriage house on the property, and so now if you want to stay a little bit longer after your picnic, you can stay on the property for one night or two nights. Oh, wow. okay. So it could be like picnic plus like almost like bed and breakfast-ish, yeah. like you're saying, yeah. oh. Picnic, picnic and stay, so picnic if you're stay. trying to plan a romantic um, weekend away, you can stay on the farm, enjoy everything that the property offers, and then even walk over or stumble over to Bold Rock, too. <laughs> <laughs> stumble over. Or stumble walk back. Over, stumble back. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I may have the wrong order. <laughs> yeah, the, um, we are calling it the picnic and stay, and once we renovated the... Um, carriage house we've had a lot of people who've seen it and who say oh are you renting this out and how can we come <laughs> and stay and we've decided to exclusively stay with someone who's doing an event like the mm -hmm. Seville picnics can 
choose to do a picnic and stay, and that's the way to get to come and stay. Um, Absolutely. The carriage house is a 1920s carriage house that's been renovated, and we've paid a lot of attention to detail on the inside, and everyone has said that it's this is like rustic luxury. And <laughs> wow. we said, oh, great, I'm glad that that's, that's exactly the feel what that they for, get. Right? So yeah. what more than a, a gorgeous picnic from Seaville Picnic and the charcuterie boards, and Stephanie is fabulous about the details that she puts into it. She really mm-hmm. takes the time to make it specific to the people who are there for the picnic to their needs and you can have that special time either up on the ridge overlooking the mountains Um, we've got down um, near the river we've got a lot of places wherever you would want to be and then if you want to stay for the night or two Stay in our carriage exactly. house. Absolutely, that's, that's great. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Be so beautiful. Now, for the uh, for the events, is it is there a place for the events, or is it usually with tents and things of that sort? It's with tents okay. because we have four different areas, and it oh. just depends on what view you want, okay. where you want to be, and okay. the size. So we've got the tents that will go to wherever they are. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And they have hops when it's in season too. So if you have someone that's more into beer as well too, that's a great area to set up for the picnic too. Ah. Yeah, and that that field, our hops field, looks out over Wintergreen Mountain and Crawford's Knob. So you're sitting there in the hops field, looking out at the mountains, and what a great place to sit. And if you're coming, Wait, for you a live there every day. I do. I do. You're it's lucky. amazing. So you're the lucky one. I am. We only I am. get the experience that once in a blue moon. <laughs> <laughs> but we're ready to share that <laughs> yeah. with other people. And the nice thing about being at Glenthorne Farm for a picnic or any other event is we are you are the sole people who are there. That's so if true. you really yeah. do want, like she's done a lot of engagements, you want an engagement and you just want it to be that private special mm. time. We're not an another kind of an establishment where you've got other guests coming Mm -hmm. in and out and so there's a lot of um, specialness about having that private little space exactly exactly. yeah just you and the nature and the beauty of that that one of the like things I repeat about what I love about Siva Fitness is just the idea that you go out there and you have the the picnic the beauty of the natural landscape the food prepared for you and you don't have to do any of the planning yourself like you don't yep. have to sit there and say, I need to figure out how this works, how I get this there. You just go and enjoy something that I think is the land. I love that you have multiple spaces because mm-hmm. sure. you can pick the area that you think is perfect for you. And then Stephanie, you'll come in and tailor the picnic to what it would be beautiful for that precise moment that the, that the couple or the people on the picnic are trying to capture. No, we had a bachelorette party there, and it was a lot of fun. They had the um, bachelorette picnic, and then they were able to change in the carriage house and went on a hike around the property, too. Oh, that's a great, another great idea. That's right. Wow. Which, which fantastic. fantastic. Now, Stephanie, let me ask you a question. So when people ask you to put the picnic together, um, do they typically have an idea as to what it is that they like as far as, you know, what type of foods that they like or anything that they may be allergic to? Or do they say, Stephanie, I have no idea, just put it together for us? Uh, usually on the booking form, it goes through and it asks all the questions. So we usually have about two to three different styles that they can pick from. Um, it comes with a seasonal charcuterie board, but then they have the opportunity. They can always reach out to me if they want um, some special colors or a little more personal personalized um, event which I try to do like the best to be able to sure. make it as um, perfect and what they envisioned as possible. I know one proposal last year to just the um, the guy proposing was like super happy because like all of the attention the detail and things that we mm-hmm. worked out he just had to show up. He he had never <laughs> been at the winery. <laughs> he, yeah he That's had never been at like the winery it. before. Just want to show up. I, I do a map from the, them, too, if they haven't been there, so they know exactly, like, where to go. Um, I coordinate with photographers, too, so that they can have one maybe hiding in the tree so they don't know it's there. Oh, didn't ruin the surprise. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> Lily, one of your previous guests, was um, the photographer for a proposal as so well, So Lily was too. hiding in the she trees. She was hiding on it in a trail. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, which is really so fantastic to think about it, probably as, and Nick can probably attest to this, probably as a guy you're so nervous about that proposal with the ring and stuff that you don't want to have to be thinking about oh how do I what food do I bring in the picnic oh, basket about how do I have to lay this out what if it's windy what if, how do I get a photographer so it's like you fill out the form Stephanie does all of it for you and the only thing you don't worry about is getting on one knee 
Basically. And having the ring with you, I suspect. I don't think Stephanie Brunette. Stephanie Brunette. Brunette. Okay, I just, I just wanted to check because that would really be a ring. Does that come with it? We provide a little emotional support, too. You know, if you need some texting the day of, like, yes, we're still going to be there. Yep. You can do this. She's going to say yes. You've got this. You've got this. Oh, you have a big fan. I think one of your biggest fans because he is a one-year anniversary fan of Seville Picnic. Carlos Devada wants to book one of those picnics. <laughs> <laughs> Is he any relation? I want. Uh, yes, that's my husband. He's been um, impatiently or impatiently waiting for me to set up one for him. So um, I'll have to, you know, give him an early Christmas gift or something, you know. or a month anniversary gift. <laughs> We're not know. booked. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I mean, so what are some of? Because I know you said you tailor so that there's seasonal themes that you do. So what are some of the fall seasonal themes? That you're that you're introducing this fall. Um, right now, it's pumpkin spice, so it's got a little bit of everything, all the lovely fall colors, um, everything that you could really think of, and even some blankets too, if it's a cold day a too, to enjoy. <laughs> Snuggle up a little exactly. bit. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome, and then that must go beautifully with, I mean, the fall colors at Lenthorn Farm at this oh. time of year yeah, I would think must so. be incredible. It is. When you're looking out now over the mountains, you're getting all the colors, the oranges wow. and the yellows and wow. the greens. And one of our fields has a full 180 degrees a view of mountains from Three Ridges, which is a very famous hiking uh, mountain that mm. we've, we're right at the foot of Three Ridges on one side and Wintergreen Mountain on the other, and... It, it just the color and the beauty of it it's just it's amazing That's really amazing, amazing yeah. now can people visit the farm even if they're not doing a pic okay. we're not we're not a, a i don't i guess to say a public or open farm right, right. but they can come if they want to have an event or a tour okay. um okay. come if they want to have a photography session mm -hmm. we're open for that all they have to do is to contact us we have our website it's glenthornfarm.com okay um, gotcha. that's Farm. glenn and then thorn has an e on the end of it glenthornfarm.com mm -hmm. okay. is our website and they can come for all kinds of events we've had family reunions we have had uh, receptions for an art festival had their um, we did reception oh, for them okay. uh, weddings and all those are the ways to come but just contact us and also, you could come for a visit just to see and to tour. We're open mm -hmm. to that. Or the home was built in 1809, so it is a historic home. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. That's still oh, there, and that's <laughs> where we're holding events down in the lower section. You can come into that area, and we can give a tour. And, of course, one of our favorites is a picnic. Come and do course. that, and better yet, Picnic and stay. Picnic and stay. If you if you yeah. stay if you stay at the carriage house, no, go ahead, go ahead. This oh, is, it, you're, it gives you're. you all the exclusive, you know, access to the property mm. and makes it e easier sure. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. to plan and set up. Yeah, exactly. What well, is you don't have to try to set it up yourself. You just you reach you reach out to Sivo Picnic. You set the place. I guess when you book through Sivo Picnic, mm -hmm. right, you can select. You can the select one night like. or two night um, stay if you were staying at the carriage house and um, just pay a deposit and then we coordinate with Glenthorne Farms to just, mm -hmm. with the dates and everything. And then um, once you're booked, then we ask if you have a preference on location on the farm since there mm -hmm. are so many different so options <laughs> to pick from. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, I love the idea that your picnic will then be accentuate the natural beauty of the place where you are. So you've got this fall colors on the trees, you've got the mountains, and then you knowing that, Stephanie, with your attention to detail, that your picnic will sort of accentuate that you'll have colors that remind you of fall. You'll have those blankets to keep you warm. You'll have that pumpkin spice feel. You know, you'll have the charcuterie board that sort of reflects the seasons as they come. Just everything comes together to really just remind you of what a special moment you're trying to capture. Whether, I mean, it could be a proposal, it could be a bachelorette party, it could be just, I want to have a, a memory that will last. And I love last. you. And I, well, love I love you. That's right. Exactly. That will last with a photographer or without a photographer. I mean, that's right. You can either capture it on camera. You say, I just want to have this in my mind. That's right. That I, in my memory, that I had this special moment that was created, and it's, and it's so unique because you really can't. I mean, how many experiences are there out there where you say, I get to go to a farm that is not typically open to the public. No. It's not some trail you <laughs> can get to. In a historic farm. In a historic mm -hmm. place yeah. that has been around since the 1700s. Mm -hmm. And I get to experience a picnic of, of a style. It's basically, I mean, I, we've seen the pictures and we've showed them. Sure. They're We're amazing. Them. 
it's a it's something you can't do for yourself really it's not even just like stephanie saves you the trouble of doing it you, you're not going to go and get all the the pillows and the blankets and the little chairs and the table I, and the tent if you need it like there are things that you just can't do as an average exactly, person exactly. because you're not an expert at it like Stephanie is that you can there go there and get this amazing mm-hmm. experience. And I always try to put myself in the customer's shoes as well, mm-hmm. too, because my background is in design, so I learned a lot about ergonomics as well, too. Oh. So just making sure that, you know, even though you're sitting on the ground with pillows and stuff, making sure that everything's at, like, a nice height, that you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. The weather conditions during the summer when it was really hot, we were providing... <laughs> um, cold frozen towels too just to wow <laughs> a little thank you for yep. putting up with virginia's weather conditions exactly. that's amazing <laughs> but now yeah now the winter we've got blankets on a lot of warm blankets warm yeah. blankets yeah <laughs> we have fire pits at some of the locations too mm. and then as we transition in winter i think we'll we'll be having some fun um indoor pop-up events as well which is another mm-hmm. um, option too yeah, at Glenthorne Farms because we can set up at the, the nice thing about the carriage house is it has nice big large doors that open up to the patio uh, so you can still depending on yeah. the weather you might have a little bit more of an indoor outdoor option mm-hmm. and still be able to see views of the farm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's great one of the that things you think great. about is it's a, I love that it's year round but sometimes winter is one of those things where it's such a beautiful time of year mm-hmm. like when you can look out and depending on how recently it snowed and so forth it can be gorgeous, but obviously it presents its own challenges. So to be able to have that sort of mixed space where you can say, I'm kind of in winter, but I have the, the comfort of being partially indoors and knowing that you're there to make sure that, that it's a comfortable experience. As well, that's just... That's a great partnership. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I take my hats off to both of you because that's fantastic. I mean, really. All right? I mean, it's just, know, just that, the, uh, to, to be able to stay at a farmhouse that has that kind of history with those views and then be able to not have to worry about anything else and you have this beautiful picnic in front of you, wow. I mean, that's, that's special. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, we just feel really blessed to be working with yeah. Seville Picnic and Stephanie and doing this because, like I said, it, we love the fact that the farm is still very private and we want mm-hmm. to share it with people, right. but we do want to have that intimate experience for them so we're sharing it but we're sharing it in intimate moments um not just sharing it wide open with a lot of people at a lot of time so partnering with stephanie has just been fantastic for us and we just love what we're doing together and we're just really excited about it i can see that (laughs) it's been a fun experience and then too if you would like um wine or bold rock with your picnic too we can help coordinate pickup as well, too. So if mm-hmm. someone pre-orders it from one of the local wineries, mm-hmm. too, we can pick it up and have it at their um, picnic so they can still enjoy oh, okay, so bold. a little, little bold. bit of everything. Exactly. Anything and, you could need. Yeah, it is. Actually, Bold Rock is on the other. The Rockfish River runs mm-hmm. between our property and theirs. So we are, you literally can walk across the road and <laughs> there, <laughs> and there you are. <laughs> Go up the hill and So you don't even have to there. drive there. You don't even have to drive. That's perfect. You can Go walk. Go over there and like <laughs> you can stumble home, but it's not a big deal. You're not driving. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Carriage right. house. You stumble back to the carriage that's house, right. and you're, carriage and you're house all set. And that's yes. right. Yeah. And you're all set. Oh, that's that's amazing. And so, so what's the website for people to book through Seville Picnic? Yes, yeah, so they just go directly on Seville Picnic. Um, if we have Glenthorne Farms um, open date, they mm-hmm. can select the picnic. They can add on the one or two nights stay automatically, and it just collects the deposit, and then mm-hmm. they'll handle all the um, paperwork and the remaining balance once they arrive on the farm. Oh, mm-hmm. so easy. It's Piece of cake. So simple. So SevillePicnic.com? Yes, and if they don't see an available date, they can always reach out, too. I'm sure we can work something out, mm-hmm. too, and... And make their day special. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and both of us have Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we are at Glenthorne Farm, and she is at Seville Picnic. Seville yeah. Picnic, yes. And you, and you, I think you've both been tagged, and Nick is doing his job. You've both been tagged Good. on today's <laughs> post. So you can just literally on the Today Manana page, click Glenthorne Farm, go right there. Click Seville Picnic, go right there, and voila, you can you can you can put your your picnic and stay for yes. for the fall. That's a great idea. That, really that is a fantastic I mean, idea. You guys had a great idea there. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking Thank forward you. to see the, the fruits of this partnership, and uh, we'll have you back to see what, what comes next. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. This has been a great experience for us. Absolutely. Wonderful. It's time to enjoy the charcuterie board. Yes, it is. Yes, it is.
Oh. And not eat on camera. And not eat. <laughs> <laughs> right off camera. Right off. Sometimes the guests like when we eat on camera. They're like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> but then we'll always get one and say, how come I wasn't there? Or that uh, Mike at the office, how come I wasn't there? Today? That's right. Why didn't you invite me on the set today to have some of the, uh, the charcuterie board? It's going to get tougher and tougher to keep, uh, you know, Nick and Mike away from that. I know, away from my special. Yeah, they're trying to pull me out of this chair. I can see that. Such beautiful creations that. Uh, I, I should have added some ones. of the leftover empanadas on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little Latin feel from today, mañana and sombreros. <laughs> Absolutely, ah, oh, but such a, always such a pleasure to have to have you on, and just a, a beautiful beautiful partnership that I think will it is, bear much it is. fruit. Like I said, it was um, a fabulous, great idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially when you know it's fall, winter, spring, yeah. it'll be so beautiful, especially uh, in all those those seasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But absolutely fantastic, and so another great show that we had today. Really enjoyed it. Oh, I, I, this is yeah. I mean, these. we say this every week, but it's it just it turns out to be a lot of fun, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's fun because you can feel the passion and the love that people have for their businesses. I love it because the idea of small businesses growing and and flourishing is what I like and what I like to see. And the idea that you can now share this with other people and and you know enjoy it yourself, you know, what better than that? I know, you know? exactly. You participate yeah. and and know that it's all local. Yes. And, it's, and it's people that yes. live here and love this community just like you do as the customer. Exactly, exactly. Which is, which is special and, and fantastic. Yeah. You know, we've got we have some more fantastic things going on uh, next week. We're going to have our Latina roundtable, the first round of our oh. Latina roundtable. Okay. So we've got Liz Marie Zambrana from Healing Moon. So, we, so in other words, guests we've had that we're bringing back okay. to sort of chat about Latina entrepreneurship uh, in America, so we've got, and locally. So Liz Marie Zambrana from Healing Moon, Chris Martin from Baker No Bakery, and uh, Carolina Medina, who's the Director of Lending and Operations at the CIC, the Community Investment Collaborative. So talking a little bit that's about- gonna be, That's gonna be high energy. I can just- Oh, it uh, is, it is, yeah. it is. But we like high energy. Huh? Well, we, uh, I certainly do, I love it, yes. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's what, what makes want. it exciting. That's what we want. Uh, Pauline, Pauline Brunetti watching the show, saying very enjoyable show. Thanks for Thank watching, you, Pauline. Pauline. Just always be sure to, to let us know what you're thinking, like and share the show. Love to have our guests. We really appreciate just being on the set, Judah behind the camera. Appreciate all our sponsors, Seville Picnic, uh, Cristel Noel State Farm, Vitae Spirits, uh, GBS Financial Services, partnering of course with Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking group here in Charlottesville, presented as always by Emergent Financial Services. And just love being on here, love you the audience that Thanks for, for watching, for letting us know what you're thinking. Um, Nick has been sharing. You can check uh, at Sevo Pitnit at Glenthorne Farm uh, right there in the, in the feed, in the comment feed. But just really appreciate uh, the audience coming out and, and sharing and let us know what you think. But just Absolutely. Another blast. And so we're, we're excited to see you next week. But until that time, hasta mañana. <laughs>